Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be hailing from. This is Red Hat Enterprise Linux Presents, episode number 54. And today we are talking about the Enable Sysadmin community. The Enable Sysadmin community. I speak for a living, can you tell? Um, but uh, anyway, I'm Eric, the IT guy, Hendrix, and joining me every episode, almost, is Mr. Brian Smith. Hey, Eric. How's it going? Uh, well, really good, really good. I had some time off, and and you and Nate had an amazing episode about System D a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and uh, and then uh, you know Nate hung out on into the terminal last week as well. So it's it's been good. It was nice to take a step back and and have a few days off um, and make fun of Nate in the background. Although I think he had a meeting, so I don't think he's here yet. I'll have to tease him later, but. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Last week was awesome with the, with all the system D people. It was, it was a really good time. Yeah, I think that was one of the few times we've had engineering on the show, and I think it was I, it was huge. Uh, it was yeah. it was a great show. I learned a lot, um, and in fact, it influenced a blog post that I wrote uh, <clears throat> using system D timers instead of uh, cron tab. So nice. you know, a lot to learn, and that just goes to show you that if you've been in the industry for ten years, fifteen years, or ten minutes. You can always learn something somewhere from somebody. That's for why sure. I love doing what we're doing. Yeah, for sure. And that's what Rel Presents is for, right? <laughs> exactly. Learning new stuff. And so today we're we uh, we've kind of done some product focused stuff the last few weeks. So today, what I wanted to do is uh, we love talking about our community. We love talking about the upstream. I'm showing my my brand new CentOS uh, shirt with a brand new logo. Uh, so shout out to Sean McCants for for sending that my way. Uh, but uh, uh, we love talking about our community, and Red Hat is nothing but in love with our community. Um, whether that's the upstream, whether that's open source, whether that's DevOps, whether it's uh, some of our uh, communities in Fedora and CentOS. But there's one uh, that we've been partnering more and more with over the last few, uh, probably a couple of months, I think. Uh, and that would be the Enable Sysadmin community. Uh, so if you aren't aware, um, you came to the right place and came to the right show. In fact, if you'd like to be part of the conversation, uh, we're really cool and high tech now because we have QR codes in uh, in Rel Presents. Uh, so grab that uh, QR code. You can jump into the Discord channel. Uh, but here joining us today is Tyler Kerrigan. He is the Enable Sysadmin uh, community lead. Uh, so why don't we bring him on the show and uh, we'll we'll get talking about what he does and what the what the community is for. Hey y'all! Hey Tyler, hey. welcome. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you're able to join us and on short notice. So to to anyone <laughs> watching, Tyler uh, got a frantic message from me the other day going, "I took a week off, and Brian and I realized that we didn't reach out to any of our guests. Uh, are you able to just show up and?" do a show. Uh, so Tyler was very gracious and showed up. <laughs> so if anything yeah. falls apart, it's Brian's fault. <laughs> so, so Tyler, just to start, can you tell us a little bit about, about yourself, your background, like how long have you worked at Red Hat and like, what exactly do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let me see if I can answer those in, uh, I think the order that you asked. So, um, like you said, my name's Tyler. Uh, I live in the Raleigh area. Um, here in North Carolina, which is a happy circumstance, I guess, because I'm pretty close to, to HQ. Um, professionally, uh, I kind of got my start with technology, uh, actually in the Navy, which is a little different than, you know, a lot of folks. Um, I was on submarines for five years. Uh, I was stationed on the USS Georgia, which is a, uh, a big, giant submarine. Most people think they're really small. This one was massive. It was like living in an office building uh, for half the year. But um, yeah, that, that was actually the first place that I encountered um, Linux and RHEL specifically. We had a communication stack that was running an older version, as the government is known to do, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I just found myself kind of with a knack for it and really enjoyed being the systems guy. Um, worked on Tomahawk missile systems over there. And oh, cool. Um, yeah, it, it, it was, an, it was a, an experience for sure. But yeah. Um, after that, I decided to get out for family reasons, honestly. Um, I had been married while I was in and would like to stay that way and uh, decided to uh, get out and really focus on that sort of thing. And so I ended up at EMC um, right before they uh, were picked up by Dell. And um, I worked over there on their backup and storage teams for about two years. And really, I had a great time. That was kind of where I've got 
my civilian side, like hands on um, experience. I worked with a great team. I had great, great leadership over there, but uh, I got a call about uh, a position as a technical writer. And it was a contract position. And when they were like, oh, it's for Red Hat, I was like, I, I don't, yes, I don't care. It, yes, I will do it. Um, it was, when you, when you get to Raleigh, you see the big this skyline, right? It's pretty eye, eye catching. And I was like, man, I've only ever heard amazing things. I want to go check that out. And was lucky enough to um, be able to do so. And that was right as um, Enable System was spinning up. So I started uh, in September of 2019, unofficially, and then officially uh, in February of 2020. Um, so I've been here, I think, right at three years. Um, and really, really just enjoying it. It's, uh, it's been great. As far as my day to day here, uh, I am the community lead for Enable Sysadmin. Like you said, uh, didn't start out that way. I started as a writer. And that's why kind of what we do there uh, is near and dear to me. But I've moved on to uh, really dealing with authors and people and building community programs and things like that. And I find that I, I really love to talk to the community. Um, so this is an ideal space for me. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. So before we zoom in on uh, before we zoom in on uh, enable sysadmin in particular, uh, what what would you say a community community manager does? Uh, I know that's different no, depending on where you go and what you do. Uh, everybody seems to have their own uh, idea of what a community manager is, but maybe what what is a community manager to you? And then how do we define that here at Red Hat? Yeah, I think um, being a community manager kind of it depends on the community that you manage, right? Like I, I think that uh, every uh, quote unquote audience needs like a different level of touch uh, of contact and that sort of thing. The thing I love about um, sysadmins and really operations folks in general is that it, it's all very like down to earth. That, that's been my favorite part of it is just meeting and talking to people. Um, we're not overly formal. Uh, it's not honestly one of my, my strong suits. Like I could put that hat on for a few minutes, you know, it tops <laughs> if I needed to, but um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy almost like the camaraderie of it, even though it's like people that you don't know. Right. But like, we've all had pretty similar experiences at, at some point or another. And um, it's just been a lot of fun to interface with those folks. Um, as far as what community means to me, it, it's really just that, right? Like it, it's finding a group of people that you share something with you know whatever that is whether it's an interest or a hobby or a past experience or whatever right um and and talking and and it, making those relationships with people that you wouldn't otherwise get a chance to to talk with and meet um with our community specifically one of the things that we kind of specialize in is sharing it's knowledge sharing i would say that's probably the number one thing that our community does is knowledge share um you guys both know right there are new people coming into our industry every day and people that are touching Linux for the first time. And we want to be kind of the uh, place for them to find the guidance that I would have loved to have had, you know, when I was starting out. Um, so yeah, I, that that's kind of a, in a nutshell, I think what our community does and, and what I, you know, find it to mean. Very cool. So we've mentioned Enable Sysadmin several times here. So in the unlikely event, we have people watching who <laughs> have no idea what Enable Sysadmin is. Like, can you tell us a little bit, you know, what is it? Um, you know, where, where can you go to see it? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. First of all, um, if you want to find it, like if you're actively looking at it now, uh, it's redhat.com slash sysadmin. Um, and we run a technical blog. Um, one of the cool things about us that I think kind of makes us stand out a little bit from a lot of um, properties within Red Hat is that we are a community site. And what I mean by that is that you don't need to be a red hatter in order to contribute. Um, in fact, you know, in some cases we prefer that you not be right. Like it's, it's a lot of fun to get to talk to people who have various, you know, views and experiences and things like that. Um, but yeah, what we do is we, we run a technical blog uh, around all manner of topics, right? It can be anything from basic Linux, you know, uh, command line stuff, uh, why you should use this command versus that command for general stuff or, Hey, let's look at deprecated commands and here's all their replacements, like things that you would want to know as, as you're kind of coming into the space. Um, but we also get, you know, a lot more um, niche, a lot more technical. And we talk about um, really, you know, technology specific stuff. I'm, I'm wearing my Podman shirt today um, sh since we're doing shout outs. Uh, shout out to Tom Sweeney for sending me this. I really appreciated that. <laughs> and we've worked with his team pretty closely over time. But um, 
yeah, I mean, we dive into uh, all manner of, of topics. So we do a lot of cloud stuff. We've done a lot of OpenShift content. Uh, we've done uh, a lot of Podman content, um, like I was saying earlier, and really uh, anything and everything in between. Oh, yeah, there we are. Yeah, I'm getting fancy here in the background. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you can see, um, uh, I would say that our content um, is maybe 50 50 uh, on you know community content versus uh, red hat content um but it's it's a really great place to to be um we like to uh, work with authors of uh, all skill levels and from all over the place so if you're interested you know let us know and a great place to get started with that quick uh, quick call to action is the uh enable sysadmin discord channel uh we mentioned that in the qr code uh, we'll put it in the chat as well, uh, but definitely head on over there, join in. There's uh, consistent chatter about uh, blog ideas. Um, occasionally, someone will get a, get a uh, inspiration for a topic and say, "Hey, um, could someone write a topic on this?" Uh, like there's a, a shout out just just an hour ago about uh, what Agile is. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just asking around for who's who's got an interest in this, who wants to learn something about this and write a blog for it. So it's not like you have to come in fresh uh, and or it's not like you have to come in with all of your own ideas. Um, I've written a couple of blogs out there just this year uh, that were heavy on my mind and wanted to write about them. And uh, then I picked up two others just from folks saying, you know what, I, I kind of like some inspiration or I'd like some ideas about this, but I just I don't know what to write about. Um, so it's, it's definitely a great community. And I, I feel like I'm stealing your pitch a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. um it's take, almost more meaningful not coming from me, right? Like if other people fair. are psyched about our community, that means we're doing a good job. Right. And and to be honest, Tyler and I have been talking quite a bit over the last um, couple of months about uh, how how like RHEL Presents and the live stream community here can partner up with the Enable Sysadmin community. Uh, so a lot of, lot, of, uh, lot of talk back and forth. Uh, and Tyler was kind enough to give us a space for our... Uh, for our folks to come and hang out uh, in between shows. So we've got our own channels in there for Into the Terminal and Rail Presents. <clears throat> so, but uh, but getting, getting back on topic after I derailed us a little bit, um, <clears throat> enable, or, uh, enable Sysadmin isn't the only community in, in this space. Uh, there's a few <laughs> others. Do you no, want to walk us through what those are? Yeah, so my my uh, team specifically, we have four different communities that we uh, own, operate, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, and then uh, we have the two enable sites. So enable system in that we've been talking about. And then we have an enable architect site. Um, if it has enable at the beginning of it, it's uh, more Red Hat leaning, right? So like we uh, are um, definitely like closely affiliated. We'll talk about product. We have a lot of Red Hatters that write for it, that sort of thing. Um, that said, uh, I do want to be clear. We don't shoot to do marketing content. It's not really what we're looking for. Like I want this to be useful to people. Uh, if you want marketing content, you can find that. And uh, to be honest, a lot of people, we're going to breeze right past that sort of thing, right? So um, that's not the goal. Um, so we're not looking to, you know, if you're a new writer, I'm not going to try and twist your opinion into like a pro Red Hat or pro product message. That's not not what we do. Um, but we have both of those communities. Uh, the Enable Architect community is a newer community. They've been up for uh, two years now, I believe. Um, and they're rapidly growing. They're, they're partnering with some really great folks um, and they're churning out some really good content. Um, a lot of it is maybe more thought leadership uh, and uh, there's some overarching architecture uh, discussions going on over there and then some really in-depth in, in stuff uh, around a, a number of topics. So it's, it's a cool place if, if you're interested in architecture or if that's something that you do, we have a community for that. Um, and I believe we have uh, a link to that uh, in the show notes, if I'm not mistaken. And if I am, feel free to reach out to me. I can put you in touch with people that you need. Um, the other two sites that we have uh, are pretty cool. Um, one is opensource.com, which in our industry, a lot of times doesn't really need an introduction. It, it's a, 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 you know, a great place for all things open source. And they've been around for a long time. They're run by an amazing staff. Um, I, there's there's so much that you know great that I could say about them, but uh, if you're interested, that that's definitely uh, a great place to get over there and talk about um, all things open source. And then we have uh, another community that's called the Enterprises Project, and that's leaned uh, more towards the C-suite, um, CIOs, that sort of thing. And uh, it's a lot of thought leadership uh, style content, but um, again, great staff. And if anyone's interested in that sort of thing, um, let me know. I'm happy to to put you in touch. Very cool. 
So uh, I see in, in the chat really, Mauricio, right now there is not a Discord for Enable Architect. Um, that is uh, something that as we're kind of spinning things up, we're figuring out what their best community space is going to look like. But right now there's not a Discord for them. So, so Tyler, if, if people are, you know, thinking about, you know, potentially writing for Enable Sysadmin, like what would you say like some of the benefits you know, <clears throat> people who have written for Enable Sysadmin have seen like in, yeah. in, in their lives? Like, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm happy to. Also, I'm under the weather right now. So if you guys keep seeing me sipping my tea or clearing my throat, I apologize. I have a young son who uh, picked something up and spread it to me. So yeah, got to love that. Sounds about right. Don't worry, our, <laughs> our audience has seen me nearly die of, a, of an asthma attack once. So, um, okay. No, All right. Nothing new to our audience. It's not going to alarm anyone. Then. Cool. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, the benefits <laughs> for writing for Naval Sysman. Sorry, let me get back on track. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we, we uh, I would say the reach of the site right now, a lot of people like to write content and they like to write content because it was something that I found that shocked me is how much people want to just share um, their experiences, right? I know like when you're talking to people, it's fun to tell people about stuff that you've done, right? But like to sit down and take the you know time and effort to like write something out and, and try to go back and edit it yourself and that sort of stuff, right? It's that you have to want to do that sort of thing. And so it's, it's been crazy to see just like how many people are like, man, I really like this would help someone else. Let me go out there and share that. Right. So um, we've garnered a pretty massive reach. Um, I don't want to pat myself on the back too much. It's not just my doing. We've had a huge team, right. But uh, we've, we've grown a lot. Uh, when I first started, we were getting probably 175,000 engagements monthly. Um, and we're well over a million uh, on a monthly basis now. So if you're writing content for Enable System Men, I can promise you that we'll put it in front of a large audience. Uh, and that's that's been one of the coolest things to kind of see grow over time. Um, the other thing that's a little bit more tangible um, for people as they're writing and, and sharing their experiences is you kind of build a uh, personal brand. Um, you're building uh, credibility as you know a subject matter expert around various topics. Um, and I've seen um, people that, I mean, I, I know personally, like see promotions that have, if they weren't directly related to it, this at least came up in their reviews and things like that. Like, hey, we, you know, we've seen that you've been commuting or, you know, contributing to um, communities in a way that's been impactful, right? Like we, we keep uh, stats and metrics and things like that and can share those with authors. Uh, and they can say, you know, hey, I wrote uh, 10 articles last year, right? And we reached uh, 800,000 people, um, which is, that, that, that's crazy sometimes, right? Like if you write a personal blog, um, you might have that much success. Uh, I haven't seen that many people be able to pull that in, but, um, <laughs> you know, if you can, that's amazing. If you can't, I've got a really good platform for you, right? That That's kind of one of my pitches there. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think outside of sharing uh, kind of altruistically with uh, people who are following in your footsteps uh, with their technology journeys. Um, we've got a, a group of really fun people to hang out with. So if you want to jump in the Discord and chat about basically anything, right? Like, feel free. We can do that. There's a lot of people with a lot of various interests. Um, I know there's a group of us that get together and <laughs> play in video games and stuff like that throughout the week sometimes and just having fun with people who have similar interests. And it, it's been a, a really great experience. But um yeah, the biggest uh, concrete things I would say is building, you know, your own personal brand as an SME around, um, you know, a topic that you're passionate about, um, which is is helpful for a lot of like performance reviews and things like that. And then also just being able to share that out to a large number of people. It's uh, something we've been able to to offer as the platform grows. Yeah, when when I was when I was starting my career out many years ago, I my I was focused on AIX, you know, IBM AIX, and they had a community similar to what you do, it was called um, uh, developer works, right? Yeah. And I, like, I, I published a lot of content with them. And I really credit that to be like a, a huge, you know, reason why my career was able to progress is, you know, publishing content. It's, I mean, it's so cool to have content that you, you, you know, you were published out on these sites, it looks, it looks so good on a resume, it looks, mm -hmm. you know, you know, your, your management that you, you work for. I mean, they love to, to see this kind of stuff and talk about it with, with other people. I mean, it's just a really amazing opportunity to be able to write content, have it published on redhat.com and be able mm -hmm. to, you know, to have that um, on your resume and just to be able to talk about it with other people. It's just such a cool opportunity. Yeah. 
Uh, and I'll, I would say one of the things that uh, I did a lot right when I first started writing, because uh, I, I wrote a lot for the site when I was first hired as a writer, go figure, right? Um, <clears throat> but I, uh, I I wrote a lot and I linked a lot of that stuff over to my LinkedIn, right? That's a lot of people now are using that as their like permanent resume. Like, hey, here's just a massive online database of all the stuff I've done. Uh, and, and you can, you know, link all that stuff over. It really does look amazing when people are like, oh, what's this guy done? And you've got, you know, 55 publications on a, like a, a well-known well-established um you know outlet so it's it's uh there's definitely some opportunity there and and i i heard a rumor maybe you can confirm or deny this but uh um i i was told by a reliable source that enable sysadmin doesn't just talk about rel that there's other products in red hat that get talked about I mean, that's I'm not what sure I hear. Who... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's definitely true. Like we, we like to work with folks from, from, uh, all over the company for the people who are red hatters and do write with us. And then also for people who just like fans of our technology, right? Like, uh, we work with a lot of folks who just picked it up because they find it to be, uh, easy to access or they want to, you know, have the challenge of, you know, running, uh, a rel on a, a home lab, right? Like that, that's a thing that like that people are really psyched to do. Like they want to be able to, to sit down and, and, and do these things. Um, I, I was telling you guys before the show, right? But we recently had someone who wrote uh, a really amazing article and he's not a redheader at all. He's just really pumped about Podman, about how you can run Podman on Mac. Um, and that article, A, performed really well, which tells me that there are people out there who really want that content, right? Like there are people using that technology that are like, man, how can I use this, right? Like, how can I make these two things work? Here's my environment. Here's the tool I want to use. Let's make these work together. Um, and, and we're able to provide a place for that. Uh, one of the cool things that kind of came out of that um, is that, that article was featured really widely within the company. Like people were super happy to see it. And it's one of the, the ways that we can offer uh, people who, are, are just fans, like fans of the tech, um, you know, a, a place to get published and kind of garnish some attention around that. So, but yes, yeah, so to answer your question, right, we do stuff all over the place. We talk about uh, uh, Linux on the edge. We talk about, um, like I said before, OpenShift. We talk about OpenStack, um, all, all manner of stuff. But the, the truth of it, right, for, for people who are new to it, is that we try and keep most of the content where we can to be kind of vendor neutral because we want it to apply across the, the broadest range of, of people. Like, I really do mean it when I tell you that, like, if you come and buy something one day somewhere down the line, right, that's great. But I want the content to be useful to you immediately on whatever tech you're using. Um, that That's that's the the goal, right? Like, we, we have people come in and write articles for us because they just want to do knowledge share. They want people who are learning to be able to follow along with what they're doing. And I think it's, it's, it's been really, really neat to see. So before we moved on, I, I wanted to, uh, wanted to highlight a, a question from Shantanu, who's a frequent file, frequent flyer, geez, uh, with, uh, with our live streams. And Shantanu asks, uh, if these blogs and articles can be used as ramp ups for new joinees. Um, so like, uh, mentions that more cloud environments means less hands-on sysadmin work. Um, but uh, like, is there, is there a way, Shantanu, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there a way to, uh, to use these blogs in such a way that you, you start to learn the technology or learn a piece of it? Like you mentioned uh, Linux for the edge. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think um, I want to, I, I think I understand the, the question there. Um, yes, I would say, um, most of our content is is written uh, a lot of times from a uh, more junior level, right? But then as people uh, continue to write, we end up getting these massive, massive articles sometimes, and we turn these into series, right? And so they almost turn into building blocks, kind of uh, where like, hey, if you read article one and you're still following along, right? Like check out article two or number three, right? And as as the, the topic kind of evolves, they, they do tend to get a little bit more complex. So I would say that generally, um, if you're looking to start at the beginning, we're going to have content for you and then uh, follow on content, uh, assuming that that was something that the author really you know, found was useful and, and helpful. And the other thing I would say is that if you're really interested in a topic and you're in the discord, you can always put it in there as, hey, you know what? I'd like to learn more about this. Um, 
if we don't have content on that, then maybe that's something that you're going to inspire someone to write about now that they know, Hey, actually I know how to do that. And there's people out there who are curious about this thing, right? Like that, that's one of the, the benefits of the community bit, right? Is that you don't have to wait for a blog that you hope it gets written, right? Like you can jump right to the source and be like, Hey, is anyone thinking about this? Right. Or I'm looking to learn this. Does anyone have any good resources around it? Um, and if we don't have one, um, there's a good chance that we can create one. So uh, great question. Or crazy enough, you could go in and say, is anyone looking at writing a blog about this? You don't hear anything back and you go out and you become that SME and you, you journal your, your adventures and, um, uh, you, you write about these things as you're learning it, as you're doing things deeper and deeper with that technology. Like maybe it's, maybe it's Podman. Maybe you start out writing, you know, my, my first 30 days with Podman containers and then another article about, then I realized that Podman actually had this thing where you can run pods and generate YAML configuration using Podman. Uh, and then you write an article about how, see my other article about containers. Now we're looking at pods and I mean, you could, you could really, depending on how deep into that rabbit hole you, you go, um, you, you can even go into my first 30 days with OpenShift. I mean, you could really become an SME. You could, and, and you could be documenting this in blogs as, as you start writing about uh, what you're learning and what you're doing at work um, or, or in your home lab. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, as you were talking, I, my bad, Brian, I just want to put this out really fast while it was on my mind. Um, the content doesn't always have to be like enterprise level content, right? Like you could do something. We were just talking about Podman again, but like you could do an article about how you run a dedicated server for your favorite video game in Podman, right? Like, that's something I know people are doing and that would be a fun thing to write. That's not like some high pressure. You've got to make sure that you get everything, you know, exactly right. I mean, the, technically it needs to be right. Otherwise we wouldn't publish it, but that's something that we're going to help you with as well. Like that, that's something that, that we kind of offer um, in our review process with, with our staff. So um, yeah, don't, don't be intimidated if you're like, Oh God, I don't want to write, you know, uh, a, a, a dissertation on some technology, right? It, it literally can be like, hey, I set up this cool dedicated server for that video game that you really enjoy, right? Um, maybe you won't, I should write about it. And if you do, like, <laughs> I can probably run that content and be happy to have it. It'd be really fun. Yeah, I was just going to throw out, like, if there's an area people really want to learn themselves, you know, really probably the best way to learn something is to, you know, wh what they say, teach other people, right? So, like, if you have a goal of learning something, you know, start writing a blog about it and you'll learn it probably better than you would have any other way, you know? So, yeah. Especially if you publish it, right? Because right, yeah. people are like, Hey, <laughs> yeah. you screwed up step yeah. three. It's good. Yeah. yeah. It's good motivation to, to research it. And then, and then you'll get feedback, right? If you, if there's something wrong. So, yeah. Well, and Definitely. I don't, I don't think we mentioned this actually, uh, but uh, there are resources available uh, through the enable sys admin community. Uh, when you're when you're publishing, so there there's an edit, editorial review, there is a technical review. In fact, I I I'm pretty sure I saw Ricardo in the in the chat um, hanging out. Um, but it it actually goes through several layers of uh, of uh, edits. They provide back suggestions. Um, so you're you're not on your own. It's it's not just show up, uh, write something, submit it. And then it gets published out into the ether. It's it's um, hey Ricardo, yeah he's he he's hanging out in the chat. Uh, but uh, so there are resources um, available to help you with this process. Not to mention peer reviews are, are are a huge thing within the enable sysadmin community. I've thrown a draft out there and gone, is, does this mean anything to anybody? Is this <laughs> worth publishing? And which I think brings up another good point is this group publishes my work. So, you know, the bar's set pretty low. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I can confirm <laughs> that the barrier to entry, uh, we, we purposefully <laughs> keep low uh, because we want this to be a welcoming place, right? I, I know um, that I've heard from a lot of people that they've gone to publish a blog, you know, at various outlets, right? And a lot of times either the process is, is kind of convoluted uh, or it's really, really um, strenuous as far as like it has to be submitted in this format through this you know web form or whatever, right? And that's one of the fun things about being able to be in control of how we run this, right? Is we set the bar where anyone can write basically any format. Don't send me a PDF. Any other format, uh, 
you can, I guess, but I'll probably ask you for the markdown. Um, no, but you, you, we, we'll take any any format really, um, and it, you can you can send it in the Discord in our content submissions channel. You could email it directly to me. You could DM me. Like it doesn't matter as long as you get in touch with someone from our team. Uh, and it's myself. We have a managing editor her name is Vicky Walker. She's amazing. She's brilliant, um, and and she does a lot of uh, the back end editing uh, and works with our professional copy editors as well. But um, she's great. You can get in touch with her uh, or Ricardo, who's hanging out in our chat. Um, and Ricardo's, uh, he, he's a, a fun story, right? Because he used to be a community member. Uh, he was a highly involved community member. He's still a community member. I said used to, like he's no longer. That's, <laughs> that's inaccurate. Ricardo is still a community member. He just also happens to be on staff now. Um, and, and he's, uh, helping us out with all of our technical review. Um, so you're, if you write content, um, technically focused, uh, which most of it is not all of it, but most of it is you're in good hands. Like we have a, we have a really good staff, uh, for making sure that, what you send us in the finished product uh, is something you can be really proud of. Very cool. So we talked a little bit about the, the editorial process, but like, hopefully we've convinced everyone watching to, to write. So like, what's the process to get started? Like what's step one? Man, um, there's a bunch of ways that you could do this. I would say probably the most simple would be to join the discord um, and then just jump in, introduce yourself, um, I have a channel in there that's kind of an AMA where you can just ask me whatever you want, right? Um, you can also DM us. Uh, that, that'd be the fastest way, I think, especially currently, right, um, to get in, involved. Um, the other thing that you could do is we have a web form that is on the website um, called, uh, it's, I think it's on the Join the Community tab. Um, it, it should be pretty easy to find if you go to redhat.com slash sysadmin. Um, but you can fill out that, that web form and then I can get in touch with you via email. Um, but yeah, I would say that would be step one, right? And then after that, it would just be coming up with your idea. So if you have something that, you know, you did at work lately that you need to write uh, KB on, um, it'd probably make a good article. And if you're doing something at home that you think is really interesting, uh, you know, with a home lab or I don't know, some sort of a network storage or something, right? Like something like that that's interesting to you. Like we could we can talk about that as well. And then if you need help uh, coming up with topics, uh, we can do that as well. Like I'm happy to set up calls with people. I've done that a bunch where we have someone join the community and they're like, Hey, I don't know what to write. Right. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's jump on a call for 30 minutes. Talk to me about your experience. I can give you an idea of like metrics wise, like what kind of content's performing well with our community. Um, and we can go from there. So it's, um, I, I hope that it's, you know, really easy for people to get involved. We try and make it, uh, as, uh, not, as not daunting as less i don't know how you know uh, we're trying to make it uh be really welcoming to people so <clears throat> I, th I think one of the big keys to take away from that is just write something join the discord find a topic any topic uh i th i think it was jscar uh early on or, or rick who uh, was saying that you know you might write 12 articles and trash 11 of them to find the the right one but you know, go in, get your hands dirty, get get used to the process, just write something. Uh, that's actually how I, I came to fall in love with content creation, whether it's blogs or videos or live streams, is I just, I tried it out. Um, so just write something, anything, um, like Minecraft or Valheim or any of these gaming servers are excellent fodder for, um, okay, so it was Nate that said that, I, I was I was corrected. It's funny how pretty much all the rel live streaming hosts are in the chat today, um, which actually Scott McBrien uh, talked about uh, uh, talked about the enable sysadmin community uh, fifty two episodes ago. So this is actually the the second time that we've we've been talking uh, we've we've talked about enable sysadmin on on this uh, on this channel, but. Uh, Going from that to to now, the con the the community is so much different, so much more fleshed out. Uh, the processes and procedures are super smooth. Um, yeah, we finally decided to do actual documentation <laughs> three years later. So we have <laughs> codified processes for how we do things. It's crazy now. The, this this is not the Red Hat way. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it wasn't my way either. That was. Uh, Again, shout out to my amazing managing editor, Vicky, uh, who was like, hey, we should write some of this stuff down. And I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, I uh, I think write something is a great um, piece of advice because that that a lot of times can be the hardest kind of blocker to get through, right? It's just putting pen to paper. Because once you get going, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Like 
this isn't that hard to just write about the thing that I just did. Um, and once you get something right, like, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We have a staff that is literally here to make you look better in your writing. We will help you. And, and it's not a thing where we'll just make your corrections and then not talk to you about it either. Um, uh, we'll make the corrections. We ask you about it and make sure that you approve so that you can see what we changed. Um, and there's a couple of ways you could view that, right? One, you could say, oh, they didn't like what I wrote and they changed a bunch of stuff. But the other thing you could do, um, is, is kind of like learn, learn the style of it too. A lot of it is, you know, um, uh, AP styling, right? Like stuff that if you're not actively in school or a professional writer, you might not be doing regularly. Um, and we don't sweat that. That's okay. That's like, we have people on staff for doing that. So, um, we, we definitely want people to just be able to jump in, right? Like you talk, right? Like if you can, if you can talk, you can write. Um, and, and we can, we can help you, uh, get it pretty and, and ready for the internet. So. A question that uh, that comes to mind, though, is I go through this process, I write some content, um, then uh, then what happens? Do I do I own that content? Is that mm. uh, do I forever sign my soul or at least that article away to Red Hat? I mean, what is what does that look like? Yeah, so we have you um, come out to a pool at midnight uh, and you have to swear. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. So we we publish everything under a Creative Commons license, uh, and you own the content from from beginning to end. Um, truthfully, if you have your own blog, right? Like, I mean, it, it's yours. You can always publish it there too. The one thing we do ask generally is if you're someone who um, likes to publish to their own personal blog, is that you let us publish it first for like two weeks. Um, that allows us to get some really good traction with search engines, um, and as far as you know, garnering viewership, right? That, that that's been a really successful strategy for us, but. No, I mean, you own the content start to finish. And again, um, through all through all the editing processes, technical and, you know, grammatical and all that, uh, we'll send you all of the corrections that we make uh, and ask you, you know, about things like, hey, does this look okay to you? Um, we'll even sometimes be like, you know, hey, what do you think about adding, you know, a section here about this, you know, adjacent topic, right? That would be helpful for context for what you're doing, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we, we really, I mean, strive to be, super engaging but user-friendly kind of um staff for you to work with as far as getting your content out but to answer your question you own it the whole time if you ever publish something with us and then are unhappy with it like we can go back and make changes um the other thing is that like if you publish something with us and you're like god actually i wish i hadn't done that i for some reason like i don't want that on the internet like i'm happy to remove that content for you it's yours <laughs> like you're in control of it yeah, that's that's super cool that it's all under creative commons that that's very, very cool yeah um so one question for you tyler so there's this enable admin <clears throat> enable sysadmin sudoers program can you can you explain like what what that is and yeah i'm happy to happy to chat about that so we have um some like uh community incentive programs uh, as well for people who write uh, regularly for the site the sudoer program is a um i would say pretty small group relative to our toter uh Total, total authoring pool. Um, like so we've we had lots of people write for the site, hundreds. Um, right now we have probably twenty. Uh, I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but probably twenty-ish active sedoers. Um, and it is essentially if you write three articles for the website, you are eligible to join with the uh, follow-on commitment of three more. So overall, to break it down in the simplest terms. We ask for six articles annually per year. Uh, you can write them at the beginning of the year, the end of the year, you spread them out, doesn't matter. You're also free to write way more than that. It's totally up to you. We have people that write, there's six. We have people that write 15 to 20 articles a year. Like it's it's all over the place. <clears throat> but what that gets you, uh, we have some locked areas of the Discord. So it gets you into kind of our velvet ropes section um, where our seduers get to hang out and talk about uh, you know metrics and things like that. Um, it also gets you into uh, these meetings that we host. Um, they, I think right now we're doing them uh, once per month. That is probably going to increase. We used to do them every other week, uh, and that uh, kind of fell by the wayside. I had to take some time out um, about a year ago for paternity leave, and it haven't got quite back into the swing of everything yet. But um, I think we're going to be increasing that, so we should be back to every every two weeks here shortly. Um, with various, you know, sometimes we'll do it in the morning, sometimes we'll do it in the afternoons just for, you know, time zone deconfliction, things like that. But, um, it's, it's just a time for you to get together with staff and with the others to doers and talk about the stuff that we're working on. Right. Like we, as a staff will 
talk through um, what we're seeing from all of our like data analytics stuff. Um, so we can talk about, you know, how many page views are, are have we garnered this month? Uh, what type of content is performing well? Uh, we also can provide, you know, specific stats for articles that authors want to see. So if you've written, you know, five articles this year and you're like, hey, how am I doing? We can pull all that data for you. It's just a good time for us to get together and talk um, about things going on uh, kind of behind the curtain. And then also so that you can share ideas with your, um, you know, your peers um, and, and get feedback. Or we've even seen collaboration articles come out of those meetings where it's like, you know, you'll be talking about a topic and two people will be like, oh, my God. And then they'll sync up. They'll have that stepbrothers moment where they're like, did we just become best friends? Uh, and, and then an article is magically born out of that. Uh, and it's it's like one of the funnest, you know, the coolest things to see as a community manager. So that's definitely a good time. Uh, we also offered swag and things like that, too. Um, I don't know that it's like, man, I should go and join the community to get free stuff. Right. But if you want to, we, we offer that. So. I'm surprised you didn't start with talking about the swag. You know, it was a little surprise. Right, so. that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the way to get anybody to do anything in the community is just a shirt or, well, I mean, case in point. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw a thing the other day come out um, from someone who's uh, kind of a, uh, a cornerstone in the community management sphere. And it was talking about like, all right, man, like enough with like the water bottles and the t-shirts, you know? And I thought, you know, I, I get where you're going with that, but like I wear shirts every day, right? Like can't go anywhere without them. So, uh, free stuff is always fun. And, uh, yeah, we, we've got some, uh, some cool stuff that we can send out to you kind of as you, um, you jump up the ranks of our, our community, um, community ladder there. So. Yeah. And, and much to that person's, uh, dismay, I'm sure I actually fast tracked a, uh, a blog I've been working on with the CentOS project. It's like, I don't know if you want me to fast track it, it might cost you a t-shirt. And uh, so my, my laptop now has a CentOS sticker on it to go along with my system roles, enable sysadmin. Um, this this could quickly devolve into a discussion on swag. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> you, you get some pretty cool stuff. Uh, like like Tyler sent me a, uh, a hat um, when, yeah. uh, when it's I, not always... I hit my third article. Yeah, it's it's uh the other thing, too, is it's it's not always going to be, you know, clothing, things like that. Every like uh. Last year, I or maybe maybe it was the year before that, we did uh, USB C to USB adapter, like so stuff that you actually need if you're someone who works on a laptop but has multiple monitors, right? Where you can kind of fork your your input signals and things like that. Um, there's also discussions around potentially getting some like training materials and things like that out there. So um, we're, we've got a lot of stuff in the works. Uh, and even though the community, you know, we've we've been around for like I said, I, I think we're rolling up on four years this year. Um, there's still so much growth that's going on right now. We're one of the fastest growing communities within Red Hat currently, and it's an exciting place to be involved. So, so I think this is this may be a first for Rel Presents. Um, I talk fast, right? Well, and you, you <laughs> and me both. That's that's honestly why Brian is my co-host because he he's much more. Uh, succinct and much more measured in his delivery than I am, where yeah. I'm more like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah. So, and apparently so, I don't test my lab environments before we go live, right, Scott? So there was one one question in the chat I wanted to bring up. So um, the question was, will enable sysadmin be okay with CentOS as a base OS and not oh, real yeah. specifically? So I think so I think you know, basically, oh, as far as like home labbing stuff, like if yeah, you're going to write, write an article, if you're writing an article, do you have to use rel as as the example, or could you use? No. So uh, yeah. Short answer is no. You don't. Um, I would say generally, right? And I'll I'll just be upfront about this because we are a, a rel back, like we're a Red Hat backed um, blog. Is that if you're writing an article where you're focusing in on like a feature specifically on a distro that's competitive, right? that's probably, we're probably not the platform for that article. If you are using your favorite distro, that's not, you know, rel like, uh, and you want to write an article about, you know, the DF command, that's fine. I don't, you know what I mean? Like I, in, in that way, it doesn't matter at all. So um, yeah, I would say if you want to focus in on like operate or your distro specific technologies and features, uh, it's better if it's if it's uh, a rel like if it's Fedora or CentOS or rel or something like that. Uh, eighth, yes, uh, eighth doctor Fedora is allowed um, and encouraged. Uh, 
yeah and encouraged that's that's true we we don't have a ton of fedora content on the site that would be something that is uh welcome We're, we'd be really happy to have it so uh, I, we did a, a piece recently on fedora silver blue that performed so well so well uh because people are excited about that and they want to know about it um so yes uh Yes, you don't have to write with uh, RHEL. Uh, it makes it easier sometimes if you do, but you don't feel you know like we're not twisting your arm about it. If it doesn't, if it doesn't work for the website, I'll let you know, right? Like if you write something and it's not for us, I'll be pretty upfront with you about it. And if you write something that we can use, then we're happy to publish. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll throw out too. We we do have that um, free RHEL developer subscription, right? That's so true. so anyone can you know if you do want to use RHEL. Um, you can get that developer subscription <clears throat> for free and have, I think, up to 16 instances to to try out. So, uh, I see uh, Nate's question up there. Um, yeah, so you can reshare your own content, especially if you have your own blog. Uh, the only thing we really ask, and it's it's not a it's not a it's not a shall, right? It's just an ask. Uh, is if you let us publish it, like have a, a two week lead, uh, and that's just so that we can. Uh, gain kind of the search engine um, foothold uh, that we've done so well with. We've got a um, a lot of time and effort that's gone into optimizing headlines and things like that, so that we can get the widest audience possible uh, to the content. Um, and it's it's worked really well. And I don't mean uh, like I, I feel like actually in today's age, when you hear that said, that you'll write an article and all of a sudden I'll give you something clickbaity as your headline. That's not what we do. Um, like uh, specifically we will like won't do that we'll just we'll look at the 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 data we have available and we will make sure that it's something that um you know search engines are going to recommend to people but it, we're not we're not trying to write you know hot button controversial topic that is that is not what we do uh at all finally found the link i was looking for that's what happens when you're hosting and uh, moderating the chat. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so yeah, uh, the the developer subscription that Brian mentioned, that's at developers.redhat.com slash register if you, uh, if you don't already. Fun fact, most of my uh, home lab uses the developer for uh, individual subscription. Um, so it's that's a great tool. Um, and actually should probably be included in my home lab series at some point. Maybe Tyler can help me remember to put that in. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll make a note of that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I just saw a really interesting question pop up um, from uh, Shantanu. Uh, AI generated content. That that's a, mm. a really that's a that is a hot uh, question these days in basically every potential field. Um, AI generated content. Like if we catch it, obviously we're not going to run that. Um, it's pretty easy to catch right now. I think. Um, We've got professionals that that do our, our content review. Um, we're also checking for uh, major plagiarism uh, pretty regularly, right? So if it's content that's been resourced from another uh, site, uh, that's something that you know w we will talk about. And if it needs to be cited, we'll cite it. And if it needs to be changed, we can change it. Um, but <clears throat> full professional staff on that sort of thing. So um, we have run some content around AI. Uh, I think only one piece so far. Uh, and it was just a neat idea about kind of how AI can do some things, but it's not quite as good as a human that knows what they're doing, right? So we had an article about um, uh, AI writing Ansible playbooks and why you should probably tweak your Ansible playbooks if that's how you generate them. Um, because the AI is not always up to date on best practices or the way that uh, human logic works. You know what I mean? Like it, it's pretty good, but it's it's not it's not quite there yet. So. Um, great question. Yeah, if it's AI generated, we won't run it, um, but we might would be interested in content around the topic. So, so what's um, sorry to throw you under the uh, the the live stream bus, but uh, this thought just came to mind. Uh, we mentioned how Enable Sysadmin has grown so much, and how it's it's a very different community than it was a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, but what what's next? What uh, what what are some of your object objectives and goals for Enable Sysadmin? Man, good question. Uh, so this I year, have them the, from time to time, <laughs> uh, the Discord is is a big focus for me right now. Um, I, I just to jump into uh, a little bit of my own like community manager kind of journey in the last little bit. 
coming back from um, paternity leave, I was a little bit discouraged for one reason or another. We had a, a community instance we had tried to spin up and it wasn't very successful. Um, well, actually, that's not accurate. It was successful. But we had to take it away anyway, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, that said, that, that kind of gutted me a bit, right? Like as a community manager, my favorite part of the job is interfacing with people. Uh, and just going back and forth via email really wasn't doing it for me. I wasn't scratching that like connection itch um, that that um, I, I was feeling. Uh, we had a, a Trello board for community, um, but that was honestly, it, it was a kind of one to many, like where I could talk to the authors one on one, but they couldn't really talk to each other with the way it was set up. It didn't really work well for that. Um, so the Discord is, is is kind of a passion project for me right now. I'm I'm really excited about the fact that we have a space where in real time you can engage with people uh, who are interested in the same sort of things that you are. Um, I'm figuring out what it means to run a Discord right now. Um, they make it you know uh, fairly straightforward, but there's still so much that can be optimized. Um, there's also, I mean, when you start a community, right? Like there's um, a certain amount of um, a conversation right that you want to generate like it i think a lot of times people are afraid to be like the first person to start a conversation right and eric i know you're really great at that is like hey let me just strike my match really fast and see what happens um so that that's something that i, I want to focus in on but one of my goals this year um is i would like to try and, and hit 500 members which feels um ambitious but i think it's doable i mean we've we We've seen a lot of uh, growth in the last month or two, um, a lot of growth, and uh, I'm hoping that we'll continue to see it. But yeah, I, I would really like to try and try and hit the 500 member mark um, sometime this year, uh, or at least close to it. I, I, I'm interested to see kind of what the community looks like as it grows. And then the other thing that uh, I will be doing soon, <clears throat> so if you're interested in the community and you listen to this, actually, this is maybe a good time for me to give you a reason to check out the Discord, is it? Sometime in the next week or two, um, maybe two, because I have a sick kid and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in personal life right now. So in the next two weeks, hopefully, I'm going to be running some community out, like office hours over there where um, I'm going to put together, uh, we have a slide deck that kind of talks about what we're talking about here, but a little bit more in depth and gives you some visuals on like the metrics and, and, and things like that, um, that we're seeing some data uh, that you can use, but um, really to show off... Um, what we do and how we do it. There'll be some sneak peeks at the editorial process and things like that. Um, but the, the Discord's a great place to kind of jump in um, over there and and get in touch. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to kind of get the, uh, the... We have a lot of new members that have not written for the site, but they just like want to join. Uh, and I want to engage those folks, right? Because I don't know them that well, and I would like to, to get to know them in the way that I know our regular contributors. So that's, that's uh, some of the stuff that... Uh, I've kind of got on my plate um, other stuff that I can't make promises about, but I'm really interested in doing. Uh, and I, I think there's a possibility of it happening is maybe getting people together like a Sedewers meeting uh, where we get trying, trying to get people together in person as best we can uh, as much as, you know, people's companies and travel and all that stuff will allow for. Right. But um, that's something that I know that other community sites have done within our organization uh, in the past. And uh, I, I would love to, you know, uh, get some FaceTime. Uh, the camera's fun, right? Like I, I see some of you all uh, via the camera here and there, and we get to have FaceTime during our Sedewer meetings, but it'd be fun to, you know, share a meal and get some some time to chat and things like that. And uh, yeah, those are all just um, ideas for for growth for the, for the future. Other things that are, you know, possible and potential would be, uh, oh yeah, Nate, I just saw that. Unfortunately, I, I didn't get approved. I'm not going. So, um, uh, I will potentially be doing a, a live stream talking about some of the um, some of the, the sessions, but I will not be there in person. Um, what was I going to say? I, I think uh, there's partnerships um, within the company that I'm interested in, like I think for the community, but I want those to be valuable to people that aren't Red Hatters, right? Like if we have a partnership with people from a specific business unit, it'd be so cool to have a space within the Discord, right, where... Um, you know, maybe if you're using Ansible and you found something that like it doesn't quite work how you want or, uh, hey, you found this amazing thing that you're like, whoa, this is super cool. Right. For you to be able to interface that with maybe some of the folks who, who touch that product. Right. Like that would be an amazing way uh, to, to, to kind of share that space uh, in a way that would be meaningful, both for, um, you know, the company that, you know, we all work for, but also for um, the people who are using the technology every day. Because like what's a company without users? 
So uh, it's lot, lots of stuff that's on the brain cooking, right? But we'll see. Uh, <laughs> it's so, uh, it's not always easy to make stuff happen. So here's, here's your million dollar idea, Tyler. Okay. An enable sysadmin D&D campaign. That would work. That'd be fun. I'd, be fun. I'd show up. If it was on Foundry, <laughs> though, it's going to take a while because I'm learning that right now. And it is, it's, uh, it's killing me. It's not, it really? is not I'd, easy. I, I like, uh, I like Foundry more than Roll20, but that's, uh, I, I think that may be a conversation for a different platform, but uh, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I will say that we did get a comment about two minutes into the show about your racing chair. So you, you talk about nerds that hang out and talk about similar things. Um, that is, that is a big piece of it, video games and whatnot. So maybe, maybe take like 15 seconds and tell us about this, this gaming chair. Yeah. 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 So that, um, is, uh, my Gran Turismo seven setup. So I'm a, a PC gamer with a PlayStation. That's kind of my, my go-to, uh, yeah, Nate, it's the rabbit trail. Um, but I had a friend who got me into, to racing games, um, probably about a year ago and I, I love it. Like I found I'm really enjoying it. And so that is, um, a Logitech set up here. It's a wheel and then the pedals are down here where you guys can't see. Um, but it interfaces right into either my computer or PlayStation when I feel it. And uh, I, I race a lot. So in the evenings, uh, if anyone is interested and you're in the Discord and you're like, hey, uh, I have questions, but I also want to have fun and you happen to want to race, uh, let me know. Uh, we can do some laps around the Nürburgring and chat about whatever you want. But I'm happy to do it. I love it. So kind of tangential, uh, that, that's a great way of interfacing <clears throat> with other like-minded folks. Uh, like Nate here has a uh, uh, has had a uh, community-focused podcast called Iron Sysadmin. And he's got a Discord for, uh, for his group. And there is a recurring event for, uh, right now the current addiction is Valheim. And I've I've joined a couple of times. My my Valheim skills are minimal, but I've joined a couple of times, and just the chat has been well worth the the investment in the game. The game's a lot of fun, uh, and the uh, the Podman container that's now running in my home lab is is nice to have. But just hanging out with folks like Tyler, folks like Nate, uh, Uncle Mark, uh, and a few other folks. So if if you don't have a group like that. Look to the enable sysadmin community. If if there's something missing, Tyler, uh, Tyler's probably sick of hearing from me about, hey, we could do this with Discord, or have you thought about a room like this? Uh, but Tyler and his team are very, very open to ideas. Uh, so this is a growing community. In fact, I think the Discord itself doubled in size yeah. uh, in the past like three months. Um, Triple. Not, <laughs> not, not in part due to the awesome Rel presents and into the terminal live stream audience. Yeah. don't t- don't tell tyler that but uh, but yeah. uh it's a great place so if if there's not a, a meetup um near you if there's not uh a group of folks to go and hang out and do uh, do video games with come join the the enable uh sysadmin discord um and schedule something you know it's, it's it is a community for that reason it's it's not the uh it's not the server of tyler it is it is the enable sysadmin yeah. community and i I, I tell Tyler this all the time, even though he's like, yeah, I get it. I'm the community manager. That's why I do this. But I would do, I would have done anything to have a community like this when I was a sysadmin. Mm-hmm. In fact, I probably wouldn't be marketing myself as the worst sysadmin that works at Red Hat. Uh, if I'd had a, uh, if I'd had a community like this to learn from, to, to engage with and, and to get to know. Yeah, no, I, I I totally agree with you. I, I'm <laughs> in that boat sometimes too, where I'm like, man, this would have been super helpful to me when I had first started at EMC, uh, or even <laughs> right. while I was in the Navy, right? For as much as that that crosses over, so, um, yeah, uh, I just noticed uh, Ricardo had a couple of things. Yeah, so programming is another topic that I didn't mention it earlier. But we do have a lot of crossover with developers, so. Uh, you can write for the developers website. We love them. They do great stuff. But if you have stuff and you like our community and want to be involved, we also run content like that. We're happy to have it. Um, I'm trying to see. There was one other question. Can we have links to GitHub? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Shantanu, yes, you can. Uh, that is something that we are, um, for the most part, fine with. Um, we'll, we'll get in there and check it out and make sure everything's good to go. Um, but yeah, as far as like linking out to GitHubs and things like that, we're we're fine with that. Um, that actually it falls. I know we're actually at time, so I don't know. No, you're, fi- you're, fine. Um, you're fine. But I, <laughs> I noticed um, when you're talking about kind of like what's what's off in the future, right? 
um, something Ricardo brought to us when he joined the staff was like, Hey, we should, we should start thinking about maybe creating our own uh, ways to host, um, you know, uh, get GitHub um, content and uh, repos and things like that. Right. Because um, that content, it, we, we have the articles up and they're, they're up forever. But like, if you go in and delete something or change something from your GitHub, now all of a sudden the articles uh, can, can be, you know, uh, Part of it might not work or is broken or whatever so that's another thing that's kind of on the horizon that we're looking at is um you know what would it what would it look like for us to have our own repos where we can host all of um all of our uh config files and you know ansible playbooks and things like that that we link out to right that uh people want to use so um just just more stuff to think about as you um if you're considering joining us that that's something we may have in the future uh, so, uh, Brian, do you have any closing thoughts or questions? No, just just want to say thanks so much, Tyler. And if people want to reach out to you, is is the best way on on Discord? Um, I would say probably the most accessible way would probably be via email. Um, okay. but the Discord, I check a lot more often. It pops up on my phone. Uh, I tend to pay more attention to it. So, um, yeah. But uh, if if you're interested in the community, it definitely check out the Discord. Um, come in, say hello. Um, be sure to at me because sometimes I don't uh, see every message, right? But um, yeah, I I'm happy to chat over there. Happy to talk via email. Um, really, just happy to talk. This is this is why I love the job, right? So um, hope to to hear from uh, from some of you soon. Awesome. To be fair, Tyler and I are both Red Hatters, and I don't think I've sent him a Red Hat <laughs> email or a Red Hat instant <laughs> message. I think it's all been Discord. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much for jumping in. Thank you for, for the conversation and for being gracious enough to show up uh, with with very little notice. But uh, the beauty of non-technical topics is I don't have to prep. This is this is what we do every day, right? I can talk about this kind of off the cuff. So Right. But uh, yeah, so if, if you haven't figured it out by now, the uh, the call to action today is to join the Discord, step one. Step two, find a topic, any topic, write about it go through the process. It's well worth it. Um, I've, I think I've probably published six or seven articles there over the past four years or so. And it's, it's been a great, uh, it's been a great process. Um, and Tyler's really good about updating you on how your, how your, uh, blog post is, is performing. Um, but with that said, uh, you know, we are, at, we are at time. So Tyler, any, any last minute thoughts? Uh, no, just thanks for having me. Uh, and again, if anyone is interested in kind of getting involved and you, you like the sound of what we do, um, jump over to the Discord or email me and I'm happy to happy to chat. Awesome. Well, with that said, uh, join us. Uh, we've got some upcoming uh, upcoming events and shows. Uh, I don't have my calendar handy. I usually do. Uh, so uh, this Friday, Scott McBrien and myself are continuing our uh, story arc on... Um, security in Red Hat Enterprise Linux on Into the Terminal. We'll be talking about uh, managing user uh, user accounts <clears throat> and hopefully better than our sudo episode, Scott. Um, and then join us on RHEL Presents in two weeks. I don't think we've nailed down a guest for that just yet, but uh, uh, we will be live here in a couple of weeks. Uh, coming up here in the next couple of months, we're, we'll be talking uh, to Mike McGrath, who is the head of engineering for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And I think we'll have another partner-focused episode. So more, more to come on that, and uh, we'll we'll make a show announcement for Rel Presents here in the next few days when we get our uh, when we get a get our next guest uh, lined up. But uh, other than that, on behalf of our guest today, Tyler Kerrigan, the community manager for Enable Sysadmin, Brian Smith, our product manager, uh, and um, my co-host here on Red Hat Enterprise Linux Presents, and for all of us here at Red Hat. Um, Thank you all for, for joining us, and we will see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care. Thanks, y'all.